Okay. The question is, now we talk about the mid-50s now. You're all in high school to get. Mm-hmm. So you first met the Bagbys. You're, you're, you're from the Norman family on one side of Norfolk town, and the Bagbys are someplace else. What's, how did that? Mm-hmm. But the, By way of school. But they all met at school. Uh-huh. We only had one high school. Right. For all of Norfolk? But for all of Norfolk? Or for all that the was before integration. Oh, what was the name of your school? Booker T. Washington High School. Oh, okay. That's also the junior high school. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it went from, did it go from grade school up to high school? Or? No, from uh, sixth, seventh grade. Seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, yeah, in high school. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay so one side of the building was for the junior high. Oh, uh, okay. And the other side, I said on the side of the opera, where the auditorium was, was the high school side. Okay, now my, my real question is now, the Booker T was t- it was uh, segregated, uh-huh. but, but is that the school that's supposed to have been really a, a great school that yeah. it had the, the, the accreditation from the state was so high? Mm-hmm. But then some right high- along with uh, Granby, mm-hmm. hi. Those are the two best high schools. Uh huh. Had the best ratings. The best ratings. The, but Booker T had a higher rating, or what? what, what who was Gram- Granby? Was also seg- segregated. Uh huh. With black or white? White. So Granby was the white school, and Booker T was the black school. Mm-hmm. Who was the better school? We never found that out. Mm. Because when there was anything, if any bands were participating, Booker T's band and Granby's band would always be. Two of the bands, two of the schools asked to participate. Mm-hmm. And that, that thing that never said no. Mm-hmm. That's as far as I know. But my question still remains who was the better school? Who was the better band? Who was the better band? Yeah. Mo Clark's band, Booker T's. Was Mo Clark? Folks oh, were, who's Mo Clark? Mo Clark was a band director. Oh, okay. And so the children gave him that name of Mo Clark. Well, <laughs> well, when the first time I heard it, I thought they were being disrespectful. <laughs> they could have said, Mr. Mo Clark. You know, not just Mo Clark, that's a grown person. Oh, you don't disrespect grown people by calling them by their, I call them play names. <laughs> what I, they- don't, Mr. I think Mo Clark died mm. and he never knew that the children would call, refer to him as Mo Clark. <laughs> Mo Clark would find if you run away from home Mo Clark would find you because he'll go to his sources and he'll come call here uh, I hate to talk with you bro but uh, two of my majorettes are not here to, was not here today do you have any idea of where you could, I could find them because the mamas are worried to death and I'm worried to death too and you'll say well I promised them I wouldn't unless it was an emergency. <laughs> then you ask this question, is this an emergency? You say, not an emergency now. You say, well, I have no idea <laughs> where they <Yeah>. are. <laughs> that scene would be right in the house, mm. hoping, I wish, hoping I wouldn't say anything. Oh, so they didn't want you to be the snitch. They didn't want me you know, get us in trouble. They okay. thought I would get, get us in trouble. Letting them stay there. Oh, I see what Sarah said. But these are Walter students. But, but, the, okay, hold on. Now these totally... kids who are running away from home. Okay. Really. But they didn't call it running away from home. They called it just getting away from home. Uh, so, because the mother had gotten to the point that she was bringing men at the house mm-hmm. for them to get money from the men. And they always came on payday. I didn't understand that then. Mm. So Bastine and the rest of the girls was we did entertaining them, you know. Whoa! Wow! And for entertainment, I guess they gave them a, a few pennies or something, or something. And Bastine said she thought that wasn't the thing that the grown people should be giving children. Well, how how old was Bastine? It's not your mama and your dad, huh? How old was Bastine? How what's the age? Bastine was about see, see Bastine was then about. Eight, nine years old, eight or nine. So what about these other girls that was coming to the house? How old were they? About the same age. Really? They were all in the same homeroom. And and they would and, and, and Walter was their homeroom teacher. Your husband was their homeroom teacher. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, no, hold on a second. But that then that means that was in this that was in the sixties then. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out how the how I don't know how to say this delicately, but uh, how these men, how other people came into the situation to enter, how the girls started entertaining people outside of their circle. How did that happen? I don't know. They just didn't because go to school. Because I made them go home. Mm. Mo Clark. <laughs> Mo, 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 Mo Clark. Mr. Clark mm. saw fit that he would let, he would let, he would find them, bring them home under certain conditions. He found out what was, I guess the girls told him what was going on. Mm. And he must have asked them, well, are you able to do that next? Uh-uh. Because Mama Doe won't let that happen in this house. What I'm not understanding is that the girls, the under seven, like seven or eight or nine years old, what, the, uh, but they were entertaining. Uh, Mother was bringing those grown men there to be entertained by her little her teen, her sub teenage children, really? girls. Now, who got wind of that? How did that break up? How did they stop that? I think when uh, Vastine told what, me one, 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 day, one of the little girls, yeah, Vastine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Vastine, I think Vastine was probably the oldest of those girls. Told me that I think it was the right thing to do. For your mother, you know, someone that who lives in, in the house with you to bring grown men, you no know, grown men to your house and you had to get up and, enter, and, and uh, entertain them. I mm-hmm. said, that's OK. She said, but I don't mean entertain like get up and sing a song like you do when you go to church. I mean, get up and sing the song and you shake your body and all of that. Mm. I said, where is this happening, Bastine? She said, at my house. That's one of the reasons I left home to come stay with you and, and uh, Mr. Bagby. Uh-huh. This was in Norfolk. Uh-huh. Mm. And I said, what, can you just tell them you don't like that? Mm. No, that's being disrespectful. To older people. Mm. She said, did, did, I said, but you just be telling your mother. She said, no. When something like that starts spreading, everybody finds out about it. Because mm. I'm not the only person, she said. I said, what you mean you're not the only person? She said, my sister and my girlfriend. She started naming the children. I said, don't tell me their names because I'm going to have a memory retention uh, she said, that means you're going to remember. I said, I remember everything. She said, oh, my gosh. Can I tell Mr. Bagby? I said, don't tell us. What you want to do is get out of that environment. Mm. How do I get out of it? I said, sometimes people get married. Mm. Sometimes people move away. Well, and I can't. named all the different ways. Yeah, well, a nine-year-old is not going to get married, no? <laughs> That's right. She said, until I get old enough to get married, mm-hmm. what do I do then? I said, just tell your mommy that you didn't have a nice, she would always ask her, did you have a nice time? And he would say, yes. Mm-hmm. I said, tell the truth. Mother asked, did you have a nice time? And they said, no. What you mean, no? I didn't have a good time. Because that old man was old. He's older. He's older than Mr. Somebody who lives in the neighborhood. Mm. He's older than he is. They come call me, call me honey. Well, and baby and all that stuff. Mm. She said, that is not even what I hear Mr. Somebody say to his wife. To his, no, his, his mother. And it was his wife. Call her those names. So we thought... At first, that was a good thing. We wanted mm-hmm. somebody to call, you know, her mo- their mother mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. He said, well, he, she said she didn't hear that. Mm-hmm. So her mother said, you're trying to tell me that you're not thankful for what I'm trying to do? She said, no, ma'am, I'm thankful. But you're not doing it. It's those men that come here that you bring mm-hmm. or making us entertain them. 
So what happened with that? How uh, how how how, how did my, you... my baby finally married, moved to Washington D.C. But I mean that whole situation with all the, ch- the little the children coming uh, there was a and everybody if every, if the neighborhood knew about it, it's being reported. Did anything happen? Did no, that they change? Didn't, they didn't report it because they figured that that they were at our house and we were going to take care of it. But they would play as like a guard protecting the, the neighborhood. If any strange person would come in there, they would know it. As if they would know who's coming in the neighborhood. Grandma lived next door to us. Mm. On the other side of us, uh, South Hall lived, who was the teacher at Booker T. Grandma was the one that looked after little Walter when I went back to work. Yeah, I understand, but I'm trying to get back to this whole thing of, uh, I guess they in this, this in this day and age, they would, maybe back then too, they would call it child abuse. Now, if this child about. abuse was happening in a neighborhood and enough people knew about it, I'm saying, how did it stop? I know that one person got out when they got older, I guess, they're eight mm-hmm. years old, I don't know how long is it, 10 years before they, they can get out. So how long was this going on? You see? I don't know. I tell you, at graduation time, when I went there representing, for those children, for his children, I called them. Uh, I saw some strange faces embracing these these girls. I said, well, maybe they were the mothers. And I asked Sebastian, I said, Sebastian, is your mother here? She said, yes, you're here. I said, I mean, your, na- your, nat- your natural mother who brought you in the world. And she would always hesitate and say, yes, ma'am, she's here. I said, I'd like to meet her, to let her know that what an excellent job that she's done, she's doing in rearing you and the other girl. And I said, and the other girls. Bastien said, do you have to mention all of that? I said, that's how I would make a complete sentence, she said. Yes, ma'am, I'll see if I can find her. You know, that's, that that uh, place was not that large. Mm. But I guess it seemed like it was a million years for me to wait for her fast thing to bring me her mama. This is the graduation, that's it, the graduation from high school. Uh-huh. So she must have been about 17, 18 years old. Uh-huh. That's what I'm asking. So she's 17 years old now. When this, when she first was coming to your house to to escape this other situation, you're saying she's like eight or nine. So that means this has been going on for for nine or you know seven, eight, nine years old. See, it was a while before she would open up. Oh, so it started maybe at seven or eight, but you didn't find out until what time? But no, it started about the, the age that eight. But she didn't want to get her. She was thinking that would get her mother in trouble. Okay, but mother had how many children? How many other girls? There were three, she had four girls. And they all yes. were, un, but the other ones were under seven or under eight? Under her, yes. And Vastine was, old. was the oldest of them. Oh, man, I'm trying to, okay. Okay, so Vastine gets graduation, whatever, she she go, goes away. What about, the, what happened to the other girls, the younger ones? I think Vastine may have, Taking the youngest one with her when she moved, when she went in, in Washington to live, so that meant the baby in the house was out, mm-hmm. and the oldest one out. So you left the two in the middle, and the two in the middle, I guess, was going along with the program with the mom who was bringing them forth. Wow! But it was it was a thing that if Walt gave the kids a test, and he would bring them papers home to check them. So I got to the point that I was looking at the papers. I said, Walter, I can check some of these. He said, okay, though. I said, what color pen are you going to use? He said, use the red. It's all right. And initial your name after it. Mm. So the children can ask you. It will say, uh, you check this. Did you see that answer I put over there in a circle? And you would say, yes, I did. But you didn't explain what that circle meant. The circle meant there was a mistake. That they, and look some up on the back page and you'll see the same 
question, problem mm -hmm. solved without the circle. That mm -hmm. means that's the correct answer. Mm -hmm. So I got to the point that I started looking for the second answer. And if I didn't see it, brother, what I would do, and I know that was wrong when I did it, but I did it. And this is a child who has been doing it correct all the time. I mean, all the time. Papers look like something that came off the printing press. Mm. I take me a pen, the same color, a pencil, and I would draw a neat, neat line through that answer, incorrect answer, and underneath it I would write the correct answer, mm. and then initial my name. Mm. Now I wasn't supposed to do but my name. Walter just said initial, mm. but she checked it. Oh, but naturally you're not going to follow somebody else's instructions. No, and I know the baby didn't mean to put that mistake, that make that mistake. <laughs> How did you know the baby didn't mean to put that stupid mistake? Because I told Walter that baby didn't mean it. What? <laughs> Just, <God. laughs> he said, no. You know one thing? You in a department that you need to be in. He said, because those babies would take advantage of you. I said, no, they wouldn't. He said, why? I said, because I would tell them, if you take advantage of me, you are really taking advantage of yourself. Mm -hmm. I said, you're going to be messing with somebody who's been helping you all along. Mm -hmm. Walter said, I think I won't say anything to them. <laughs> he said, well, Joe, what gave you the idea of helping the children? I said, I don't want them to fail. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. Two of those kids lived on our block. Mm -hmm. And I said, if if I know, does he know he's going to have a test tomorrow? He said, no. I told him to be prepared. I said, okay. When I go out on the front porch with little Walter, and I see the rice, the robbers over there on the porch, I'm going to call him over here and tell him, do you have any special studying you need to do tonight? No, ma'am. I said, I want you to go home Go to your room or wherever you study. Get out your books. And I want you to look in the area of mathematics and study whatever was said in class today. Study it. If he made any emphasis about something, study it. Mm -hmm. He said, do you think we're going to have a test tomorrow? I said, I know you're going to have a test tomorrow. He said, thank you. Went back on his little front porch, mm -hmm. sat there with his mama for a little while. Next thing I saw him going inside the house. And I felt so proud. I said, I was snitching on my dear husband. But these children need to know. Mm -hmm. I don't want them tricking their babies. Mm -hmm. Walter said when he got to class next day, he had mentioned to the guys and the girls in the class, you better study everything he said. They said, how do you know that? He said, I found out. They said, did Mrs. Uh, Bagby tell you to study? She said she told me to study everything that we had in class today, yesterday, and study it well. Well, if she told you, it must be true, because Mr. Bagby wouldn't tell his wife something that's not true. Walter didn't tell me to tell those children that. He said when Walt came in there, Good morning, Mr. Bagby. Good morning. He said, good morning. No, he didn't. He had to clear his throat first. <clears throat> <laughs> As my friend the, 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 back, back in the day, that, that, was, that means this is official. I'm an, the, I'm an official dude saying something official. <laughs> Z told me, she said, Walt is one of the few people that she knows before he makes a statement, a profound statement. That's what I mean. He'll make that... <clears throat> Clearing his throat like he's getting the thing clear. Mm -hmm. So you understand every word he's saying. <laughs> he said, some of you may be mindful of the fact that I told you when you left class yesterday to study everything that we talked about in class. Did I not? Yes, Mr. Bagby. How many of you remember me asking, telling you the underscored words, uh, phrases, you will see it again. Good. How many of you did not remember? Well, somebody didn't remember because they weren't there that day. Mm. So that person who was absent was excused from taking the test. 
mm-hmm. because he was not privy with the information. Mm-hmm. So I thought he actually he told me that I said that mm-hmm. was nice. You know, mm-hmm. he was considerate of the children. Mm-hmm. But when that room, Walter said, when those kids put their little heads down with their number two pencil and proceeded to work on that a, that test, he said now and then he would see somebody hold a head up and look at him and smile so mm-hmm. lovingly as to say, I'm so glad your wife told me you would study this page. Mm-hmm. I said, they're my babies. Mm-hmm. So he said, when the week, next time we have a test, I'm not going to tell you, though. Mm-hmm. I said, why? He said, because you, you help the children. I said, well, that's what we're supposed to do, help each other. <laughs> I said, they said to us in our prenuptial service with the ministers mm-hmm. that we're supposed to help each other. And I said, only way I can help you is by helping the children. <laughs> he said, taking it literally. I'm taking it literally. <laughs> See, you, when you went to your prenup service, mm. mine, we had, a, Reverend Griffin was at the Baptist church and Father Martin was at the Episcopal church. They were not the same nights nor the same week. But during that time, we had to go to see Reverend Griffin. And whatever things Reverend Griffin said to us, we had heard it before, Mm -hmm. almost like a book. Mm -hmm. Reverend Griffin said to me, I love Walter. And I would love the idea if at the end of the service, that the two of you would join hands and all become in the same church. You understand what I'm asking of you? I said, yes, sir. I didn't understand what he was saying, but I said, yes, sir, because that was the preacher saying, asking me a question, and I wanted to tell the truth. So I thought the answer to him would be yes, sir. Mm -hmm. When I went to see Father Martin, Father Martin had some of the same things that Reverend Griffin had said, and he ended his with, I love Doritia. <laughs> it would, I would love to see the two of you together in the, in the same church, worshiping together. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I said, yes. No, yes, Father. And Reverend Griffin said to Father Martin, I think we have we have accomplished our goal mm. is to have them here together. Mm. And I think it's going to be a wonderful thing. Then he said to Father Martin, uh, Richard, Father Martin's first name was Richard. Richard, I don't know whether this is customary or not in the Episcopal Church, but I'd like to know, would it be all right if we would jointly join them together? At the ser- at the altar, mm. Father Martin said, "It would be a pleasure, a pleasure to join with you." So Father Martin had a, I call it, he had an uh, ecclesiastical voice too, because he could he could talk about those characters in the Bible, and you thought you were still back there in the Bible time, because mm. he would say. He will say to you, bruh, obviously you have a lot to contribute that you are not contributing. Is there a reservation in your contribution? And you got to try to absorb what he just said. And you will say, mm, 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 mm. he said, mm, mm. he would say, no, sir. But then, when we are having discussion and it's open on the floor, that means anybody can respond. It's on the, something on the floor. And you would say, oh, that's what you mean by on the floor. He said, yes. He said, that's okay. First time I heard it, I didn't know what it was either. Mm-hmm. Make you relax. I said, oh, my father. Why did these preachers get together 
for our session. I thought that's what they did because they were saying some of the same thing. I didn't know it was a kind of thing that the ministers would say to people who plan to get married. I didn't know that. So he said, ask me what were my plans. He said, I said, you mean at the wedding? He said, I said, yes. He said, you know, right after the wedding is over, before you have your reception, you are are you planning to have one? I said, I think so. He said, you think so? It's kind of late to be thinking, isn't it? I said, mm. maybe, but not at my house. Mm. If you don't have what you need, you have to be in the thinking mode. <laughs> Reverend Griffin just looked at Walter and looked at me. I guess to say, what do I have at my house to help them have a reception? Because I want my boy to have a reception. Because I think he think he owned Walter. And Walter thought that that was his daddy, too. Because since his daddy left him, mm-hmm. he said, uh, so then father said to me, when you go home, you be careful out there. And don't just accept a ride from anybody. You get on that bus. Do you have your token? Mm-hmm. That's when we're using tokens. I said, yes, sir. And uh, so Reverend Father Martin said, I'm going to walk across the street at the bus stop and wait until you get in there and sit down. Then I'm going to let the bus go on and then I'm going to come back over here at the church and lock up. So I said, thank you, Father. Well, I got on that bus. The bus driver said, is that your daddy? I said, no, that's not my daddy, but that's that's my minister. He's he's that's Father Martin. I said, you don't know Father Martin. Mm. Every child thought that every everybody knew Father Martin mm. and Reverend Griffin, because at graduation, the students would decide who they want to give the baccalaureate address, who which minister in the neighborhood mm-hmm. or near could do it. And Father Martin and Reverend Griffin were the two ministers who were chosen more than anybody else. Mm. Because he spoke at a level that we would understand. And he would always give words of departure. Mm. If you if this happens, this is a way you can respond without going along with what the crowd is doing. Mm. He said the crowd becomes very important at your age because what your mother and your father may say you shouldn't do, the crowd will say, it's okay if you let them know later on. Mm. Later on was a mistake. Later on is too late. Reverend Father Martin said to to us, when anyone tells you something and they preface it like that, he said, that is not worthy for you to let it go in your ears. Let mm. it go in and out. Well, let me bring this back around. So, we, uh, Now, remember, we was talking, I guess, uh, it's a different time period. Maybe it's 10 years later or whatever it is, uh, or tw- maybe even 20 years later. But the whole case about the, the, the child abuse in that other family, how come the, the, do families talk to these preachers or these or the, or the, or the church people? Did anybody else know? I'm still stuck. I think what happened is when Vastine, who said she went, was going to get married, mm. that was taking the, the folk that she, the mother was bringing to the house out of the picture. Because I guess she figured if her daughter's going to get married, she... Her daughter's gonna be safe because there's a man will look after her. Mm. And if the daughter, if the men look after her daughter, the daughter will look after the mother, and the mother will left, look after the other folk in the house. Okay, that's her thinking, but I'm just asking, just in general, did, did any preachers get involved or anything like that? Or I don't I don't know. I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm still stuck on that situation where the neighborhood knew about it, but not obviously not everybody in the neighborhood. Uh, namely, the, the religious people didn't know about it, so no. it just kept on going for almost over ten, oh, almost ten years. I'm still stuck on that. Off and on, yeah. 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 But I think by uh, Bastine being the oldest of the one, they w- she was more visible 
in the community than the other girls because mm-hmm. they were younger. Mm-hmm. And I think wherever Bastine would go and she would take them, you would see her with the holding them by the hand. Mm-hmm. If it's going to the corner where the store was mm-hmm. or going to the other corner to get on the bus, everything was in proximity of one end of the street to the other end. Yeah, and Vasti was the older child and she was in charge mm-hmm. of it. Okay, well, thanks for this. But I tell you one mm-hmm. thing. Yes. I learned to eat deer, lamb, fox. What's another animal? Yeah, hey, there's a lot of foxes around here, I found out. Raccoons, mm-hmm. rabbits. Mm-hmm. I think this was, was another cuff. I can't forget the full cow. And the horse. Mm. All those eight things were part of grandma's family's uh, repertoire of hunting. Mm. Okay, and well, she would tell me, and I said, I'm not going to eat the deer. Mm. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, okay? All right.